Hi, it's Mark from EndAllDisease.com and I've got another fantastic presentation for you. This one on treating vision loss with red light therapy. We're going to go over three things. Number one, can red light therapy damage my eyes? This is the most common question I get from people. Do I need to wear eye protection during red light therapy? Number two, can red light therapy be used to improve my vision? Whether you got stupid Harry Potter glasses like the ones I'm wearing now, or an existing eye condition that you want to treat, can red light therapy be used to improve your vision? Is there any evidence for this? And number three, of course, how does it work? How is it that red light therapy gives people treating their eyes and other places of their body such fantastic results? All these things and more in this presentation. This presentation I've titled, Treating Vision Loss with Red Light Therapy. By far the most common question I get about red light therapy is, do I need to wear eye protection during red light therapy treatment? This question probably arises because people know the sun and tanning beds can damage your eyes, so naturally they wonder maybe red light can too. So first we're going to go over a little bit more about solar radiation, as well as radiation that comes from tanning beds, and contrast that to red light therapy, just so you can have an understanding of all three. It'll put it into context for you. Understanding solar radiation. At least 60% of the radiation coming from the sun is in the red and near infrared end of the spectrum. As you can see on this graph that I have on the screen if you're watching this video, 52% of the radiation coming from the sun is near infrared. 43% is visible. So visible light would be your yellow, green, blue, purple, orange, and of course red. And only 5% of the energy coming from the sun is ultraviolet radiation. And ultraviolet radiation is the damaging part. It's also the part that interacts with the cholesterol in your skin to produce vitamin D. So it is to some extent essential, but it's also the portion which can cause damage to your eyes that can cause sunburn. The high proportion of red and near infrared light coming from the sun offers some protection against that ultraviolet light. Here's a fun fact about solar radiation. Ultraviolet light causes damage in the same way as ionizing radiation from x-rays or radiotherapy. Except the only difference is that when you get a sunburn, you're only being burnt on the surface of your skin, while the cancer patient who receives radiotherapy will be burnt throughout their entire body. Tanning beds. Tanning beds give off 100% ultraviolet light. 95% of that UV is in the UVA spectrum and only 5% UVB, which is the kind that converts cholesterol into vitamin D. Unlike the sun, tanning beds emit only damaging frequencies with no protective red or near-infrared light. In the absence of red and near-infrared light, ultraviolet radiation becomes increasingly harmful. This is why tanning beds are considered dangerous and known to cause cancer. A fun fact about tanning beds is that they can be made a lot safer and a lot more medicinal by replacing 50 to 60 percent of the UV bulbs with red or near infrared bulbs which will in effect simulate or mimic the sun. Alright sun versus tanning beds versus red light therapy. Now we're going to compare all three. Does the sun emit UV radiation? Yes it does. Does a tanning bed emit UV radiation? Yes it does. Does a red light therapy device emit UV radiation? No it does not. Will the sun tan your skin? Yes it will. Will a tanning bed tan your skin? I'll let you figure that one out. Will a red light therapy device tan your skin? No, it will not because there's no UV radiation coming from it. Does the sun help the body produce vitamin D? Yes, it will. Does a tanning bed help the body produce vitamin D? Yes, it will. Does a red light therapy device help the body produce vitamin D? No, it will not because there's no UVB radiation. Does the sun contain red and near infrared light? Yes, it does. Does a tanning bed contain red and near infrared light? No, it does not, which is one of the reasons why it's really harmful for you. Does a red light therapy device contain red and near infrared light? Yes, it does. Can the sun cause harm? Yes, it can. In excess, can a tanning bed cause harm? Yes, it can. Can a red light therapy device cause harm? No, it cannot. There have been over 50,000 studies to date on red light therapy, and not a single one has reported any side effect at any dose or dose frequency. And therefore, no eye protection is required for red light therapy. However, there is one exception. If you simply just cannot handle the brightness of the red light therapy device you're using, then put it on. Next, we're going to look at can red light therapy improve your vision? 
Vision improved in patients with age-related macular degeneration. In a 2008 study, researchers from the University of Heidelberg, Germany, conducted a study on 203 patients, average age 63, with age-related macular degeneration. 10 patients served as controls and 193 patients with and without cataracts received four treatments of near-infrared laser therapy over a period of two weeks. The power of the laser was 7.5 milliwatts. The wavelength used was 780 nanometers. And the dose was 1.2 joules per centimeter squared. The results of the study? The treatment significantly improved visual acuity in 95% of eyes with cataracts and in 97% of eyes without cataracts. In addition, patients with a form of age-related macular degeneration called wet age-related macular degeneration had reduced edema and bleeding, so reduced swelling and bleeding in their eyes. Always a good thing. Amazingly, and this is where it gets crazy, the improved vision was maintained for 3 to 36 months after the treatment. Four treatments over the course of two weeks lasted 36 months or three years. Incredible. So long-lasting benefits from red light, red laser light. Vision improved in patients with amblyopia. So this is a different eye condition called amblyopia. A-M-B-L-Y-O-P-I-A. -A. Amblyopia. In 2012, the same researchers conducted a study to see if near-infrared laser therapy could improve visual acuity in young and old patients with amblyopia. At the time of the study, amblyopia was believed to be treatable only in children. 178 patients were included, 20 controls received mock treatment, and 158 received laser therapy to their eyes for 30 seconds at a distance of 1 centimeter, repeated on average 3.5 times. Looks like they used the same device because it was a 7.5 milliwatt device and the same wavelength, 780 nanometers. And the dose was actually almost half, it was a lot less, 0.77 joules per centimeter square. At the end of the study, the results showed that the treatment led to a significant improvement in visual acuity in 90% of eyes treated in both adolescents and adults. So for the first time, it has been shown that now we do have a treatment for amblyopia in adults, an effective one at that. And the amazing thing, the treatment effect was maintained for at least six months. If they had followed up even beyond six months, who knows how long it would have lasted. A while back, I got a testimonial from somebody from Toronto, Ontario, who purchased a red light therapy device named Kaya. And she used it on her eyes and had an incredible story of a visual improvement. So here's some anecdotal evidence for you. I'll read her testimony. Wonderful. I asked her how things were going. She's like, I am recommending this to so many people as the results are so good. My eyes are healing almost perfectly. They were 4.5 in prescription. And yesterday I went to optometrist. And one eye is now perfect 2020, and the other one is close behind. My optometrist is super perplexed, and I laugh so hard. She said eyes like mine aren't supposed to correct like that. Oh, and by the way, the device she was using was a 24-watt LED device, which is 3,200 times more powerful than the laser device used in the previous two studies, which was only 7.5 milliwatts. So I've calculated using our red light therapy dose guide, which you get for free if you sign up for the End All Disease newsletter at endalldisease.com slash subscribe, I figured out how long it would take to get that dose. And to get a one joule per centimeter squared dose using this 24 watt handheld device, you would simply need to apply the light for five seconds from a distance to your eyes of five centimeters or for 50 seconds at a distance of 50 centimeters. That's it. But of course, don't be afraid to experiment with longer treatment times. Like I said, there's been over 50,000 studies published and not a single side effect at any dose. Never be afraid to experiment with this incredibly safe, incredibly healing technology. So to put it in perspective, I found a 2016 review on red and near-infrared light for retinal diseases, which basically they looked at all the studies to date on red light therapy for various eye conditions. So I'll read this to you now. Photobiomodulation, which is another word for red light therapy, also known as low-level laser therapy, has recently risen to the attention of the ophthalmology community as a promising new approach to treat a variety of retinal conditions, including age-related macular degeneration, retinopathy of prematurity, diabetic retinopathy, Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy, amblyopia, methanol-induced retinal damage, and possibly others. 
So there is evidence that all of those things and potentially more can be treated using red light therapy. The literature supports the conclusion that the low cost and non-invasive nature of BPM, coupled with the first promising clinical reports and the numerous preclinical studies in animal models, make photobiomodulation well poised to become an important player in the treatment of a wide range of retinal disorders. Nevertheless, large-scale clinical trials will be necessary to establish the photobiomodulation therapeutic ranges for the various retinal diseases, as well as to gain a deeper understanding of its mechanisms of action. Which leads us to our next section on mechanisms of action. For this one, I'm going to bring back research from our Naked Mole Rat presentation, which can be found at endalldisease.com slash episode 8 if you haven't seen it. The naked mole rat, which literally does not age, has more highly saturated tissue phospholipids than rats, which live much shorter lifespans. So the naked mole rat, compared to typical rats, lives sometimes 16 times longer. So we're going to compare and contrast the cells of the non-aging naked mole rat with the damaged cells of the eye. So as this diagram shows, stress causes saturated free fatty acids to be released from tissues for energy. Saturated free fatty acids are used and the stress ends and is switched off. In malfunctioning eye cells, the nature of the stress response has changed. No matter what you want to call the eye condition, it's likely caused by the exact same thing. Increased unsaturation of the phospholipids comprising the eye cells. This is what the stress response looks like when cells have accumulated a high proportion of polyunsaturated fatty acids to saturated fatty acids. So the stress occurs, which causes unsaturated free fatty acids to be released from tissues, those unsaturated free fatty acids are then used for energy by cells. And because they're so unstable, toxic fragments are formed from their oxidation, triggering more stress to be produced. And one example of the toxic fragments, which I refer to, is prostaglandins. But it depends on which kind of fatty acid we're talking here. So what we're looking at here, then, is a vicious cycle of stress caused by the oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids. So basically, the stress turns on, and it cannot switch off because of what's happening here. So it repeats, and this is when aging and degeneration occurs. So the question is, how can red light therapy interrupt this vicious cycle of stress and help the cells of the eyes heal? Red light interrupts the vicious cycle of stress in a number of ways, but here are two powerful ones. Red light inhibits the enzyme COX-2, which inhibits the breakdown of free fatty acids. So during stress, an enzyme is produced called COX-2, which triggers the release of free fatty acids into the bloodstream. And one of the things that red light does, it inhibits the production of COX-2, thereby inhibiting and preventing the release of these free fatty acids into the bloodstream. So that breaks the chain right there. If COX-2 is inhibited, the unsaturated free fatty acids will not be released from tissues, and they will not be used for energy, and then the toxic prostaglandins and other fragments will not be formed, which will not be promoting stress to continue. So this whole vicious cycle of stress is broken, by red light therapy inhibiting COX-2. But there's more. When you apply the red light, there's likely going to be lots of these toxic fragments from PUFA oxidation in the area that need to be cleaned up. Well, red light is a potent antioxidant, so it scavenges these free radical stress promoters. So this is how red light therapy can benefit the eyes, and this is, I think, is, these are, these are, I think, the two primary mechanisms behind why red light therapy is so beneficial for so many different eye conditions. So let's be clear on this. The very cause of these eye problems and loss of visual acuity and eye degeneration is the gradual accumulation of unsaturated fatty acids within tissue phospholipids of the eyes. So if that's the case, red light therapy is a great way to improve that condition. And as we've seen, it lasts a long time. However, if you want that to be permanent, there are some dietary considerations and dietary changes that you must make to the fats that you consume. For long-term permanent resolution of eye conditions caused by excess unsaturated tissue phospholipids, in addition to red light therapy treatment, a dietary change to more highly saturated fat is essential. These fats include butter, coconut oil, chocolate fat, and beef and lamb fat which contain about 98% saturated fatty acids and very little PUFA. Any oils that you have in your kitchen that are liquid at room temperature, if you switch those for butter, coconut oil, chocolate fat, or beef and lamb fat, then you are eating a diet containing a lot more saturated fat than unsaturated fat. And this in the long term will help your body detoxify the PUFA. And of course, your eyes and all cells will begin to function a lot more effectively when you do that. That's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this presentation and want to support my work, 
Check out our red light therapy devices. We've got the handheld device, the body light mini, and the full body light for the ultimate red light therapy experience at endalldisease.com store. You can also check out my books. I've got one on red light therapy, one on the cancer industry, and one on cancer as a metabolic disease. You can see those at endalldisease.com books. And for the show notes and to sign up to our mailing list, go to the special link that I've created that will take you right to this episode at endalldisease.com episode 10. Oh, and one more thing. If you enjoyed this presentation, please share it with someone you love on social media or otherwise. I'm Mark from endalldisease.com. Thank you for listening. Goodbye, God bless, and we will see you in the next presentation.